right, hey guys, Ryan Nitzen with Cycle News. We're out in Barcelona, Spain, and this is the first ride on the Stark Varg. I'm super excited to get a ride on this thing. Uh, we're all suited up. We haven't even hit the track yet. We're at a private track up in the hills here. There's actually an old golf course. It's literally like all time conditions. This is literally the first ride. We're gonna get the goggles on and let's go have a look. Go. Hey guys, Ryan Nitzen with Cycle News, and we just wrapped up riding our first day on the Stark Varg. A lot of buzz about this bike. It's really the next generation of motocross bikes. This is the, the next iteration of electric. And after the Alta kind of came and passed, this bike is really leading the way as far as the electric technology. So Stark flew us out here. We're in the hillsides of uh, Barcelona, Spain. We're actually at a track that used to be an old golf course. And ironically enough, it got shut down after it opened as a motocross track, it got shut down due to noise. So what better place to come on electric bikes where there's no sound. So really fun. The track is awesome. It was a little deep today and I expected us to be riding on a really hard pack track where the bike would obviously have a less resistance and the battery life would last a lot longer. But this morning we had a lot of rain the last couple of days and the track was actually really deep. And uh, it actually took me for a surprise. Had a little bit of an issue this morning. Down the bottom, the track's a little wet still. Came out of the turn, started sliding a little bit, but you don't hear the RPM spool up. So right as I'm getting out, it bit and it kind of high-sided me over, got the lip, broke the fender. But uh, other than that, the bike has been really fun to ride. It surprised me a lot, and I really wanted to come into with the mentality of, you know, I obviously have no biases, but I wanted to make the bike work for me, make it to where, make me like it. You know, I wanted to come in thinking that maybe I don't want to go electric and make me switch my mentality. So the hardest part for me really was jumping the bike. It obviously corners so well. There's no centrifugal forces going up and down with the pistons and the cams and, you know, everything bolted to a, fr uh, you know, a frame that just adds a lot of extra load and, and forces going ways where you're trying to fight it. This thing with the battery, the really the only thing you're fighting are the wheels. Uh, and so this thing corners like a dream. You just lay it in there and it stays planted. The thing that I had the hardest trouble with was uh, jumping it and getting the right speed. So crazy enough, this team at Stark here, they bought all of this modern 450s, the Yamaha, Honda, Cowie, KTM, Husky, Gas Gas, and they said, go ahead, go ride them. And so we went and rode those, and that actually helped me get my speed right because it's, it's easy. We're so used to riding the, the gas bike and being able to hit a jump and just hearing, okay, I'm in second gear, I'll wind it out. On this bike, you don't hear it. So you really have to feel the, the sensation of the speed to get the jump. But once we rode those bikes, got back on this, and it's, it was. I was pretty skeptical, but it was really fun. Uh, it was easy to ride, and you, I could gauge my speed a lot better. A couple things that really stood out to me, uh, the KYB suspension, this is the SSS fork, which is pretty uh, similar or the same as found on the new Yamahas, which is obviously a tried and true platform. It's a great fork, handled really well. Same with the rear, it's a KYB suspension. Um, so that to me worked really good. The seat is really long and it comes all the way up because there's no fuel tank. So it comes all the way up here. You can really slide all the way up on the bike, all the way up on the tank, I guess you'd say. And the foot pegs are nice and wide. And some of the design aspects are really like, if you could design a motorcycle now, what would you do? The chain adjuster, there's no double nut system where you have to use two wrenches. It's just a clicker system. You know, the seat is all the way front to back. The pegs slide in in one bolt rather than having the pin and all the clips and stuff. So. From that aspect, I, I really think it's cool and they've simplified you know, the motorcycle a lot, which is really exciting. Another really cool aspect they have is there's no clutch. So they have the option of doing a front brake, rear brake as the levers. And so I did try that earlier today and it was hard enough getting used to the electric. So switching to the brake, the dual handbrake was definitely different. But if you think about it, you're riding in, I'm riding in tech tens today and they're pretty stiff. So trying to find a rear brake pedal, obviously I'm used to finding one, but if you were to think about it, it's pretty difficult. So having dual handbrake was actually a really cool idea. And I think if it was my own bike and I had more time to get used to it and ride it, it would be an advantage. You can land on the brakes really hard like you do on a mountain bike. Um, and it was definitely cool. I only rode a few laps on it like that before I'm switching back because I didn't need another incident like I had earlier this morning, but 
yeah, it was, it was definitely a cool idea to try. They also have a phone that comes standard with the bike and you can control all of the bike's data and every, all the points of touch from the phone. So this bike that we're riding today is a mix between pre-production and production. Uh, they claimed 80 horsepower is gonna be the standard production model. The bike we're on today has 60 horsepower, which I believe the new 450s, I think the Honda has 58 to 62 in that range. So this is about as fast as a 450 right out of the box. We actually detune it so I'm at 90% power right now. And once you get the feel of the delivery and how it rides and how it hits, it's really fun to ride. It'd be really cool if you're someone who is sharing this bike or you know, you're teaching a, your girlfriend to ride or something where you could literally add in the power to be a 110, you know, a 125 two stroke, a 254 stroke, anything like that, uh, and go race that class or just get used to that kind of power and then work your way up as you go. Another really interesting part that I did not expect to, to experience today was the sounds of the bike. So things that you don't hear normally because the engine is running. So when you land off a jump, hearing the suspension engage, hearing the chain slap, hearing the, the tires roll over the fresh dirt and cracking the dirt. You know, at first I was like, holy cow, what's wrong with the bike? I could hear all that stuff. Or when you come into a corner and you drag the foot peg in the, and you can hear it, it's really interesting. I didn't, I didn't expect that to happen. Um, and it definitely took a little getting used to, you know, we were riding next to a couple guys and you could yell at your buddies, like kind of like you would on a mountain bike ride, you're just laughing. And the first, uh, I think if they got the audio, the first couple laps, I was just laughing and like, holy cow, it's so fun. And uh, the power delivery is definitely a lot different than I expected. I expected it to be really torquey and be able to just like wheelie really fast. And it kind of wasn't exactly how I thought, but the mid to top is really strong. You, you're always in the right gear, which is crazy. And then you can just leave it on and the bike just keeps moving. I have yet, this track isn't super wide open fast, but I've yet to find where that power hits and signs off. It, it just keeps coming. And honestly, if you were to get whiskey throttle, I feel like it would be pretty easy because the bike is so snappy and it just keeps on coming. Another thing to touch on along with the jumping that we were talking about earlier is the rear brake and how that rear brake is going to work while you're in the air. And what's interesting is it does work like a normal, a normal brake. You jump, you hit the brake, it brings the front end down. Uh, the centrifugal force of the wheel is still spinning. And then the other, the other thing that you're, you know, a habit breaker is you kind of get a little kick and you hit the gas to kind of panic rev and you can hear that rear wheel spinning when you hit the ground, it's spun up fast and you kind of jet forward a little bit. So learning that was a little different, jumping, hitting the brake a little different, but after you know one day of riding, it's, it's, it doesn't take a lot to get used to, and I think it's it's going to be something that it's kind of going to change the way things are going. You know, it's it's silent to ride here. No one's your neighbors aren't going to call and get angry. Uh, the the ability to ride a backyard track or track on private property is just is really cool moving forward. So to kind of wrap things up, really impressed with the bike. Really impressed with the company overall. The guys here they dress really proper. They look like they should belong at the Audi dealership but they all ride moto too, which is really cool. So they know what they're talking about. They know what to look for when designing stuff or what a rider wants when, when they're you know, bringing a product to market. And I'm really impressed with that. You know, we get a lot of companies that come into the marketplace and say, hey, we're gonna make this new bike, but they don't know what they're talking about or what they're doing. They're hard to, hard to believe as a consumer. And from that aspect, I think these guys have done a great job. I think the bike for only three years of development, I think has come a long way. And I think it's going to be crazy. I think it's going to shake things up a bit. It'll be interesting to see where this goes in the future, but excited to get one stateside and start riding it on some of our local tracks and really start putting it to the test. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. All right. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this video. We just want to touch on a few things before we wrap things up here and cover a few things we might have skipped over during our trip to Barcelona. The first one is the battery life, and this is something that a lot of people want to know about. Unfortunately, we didn't really get a chance to fully test the battery on this bike. What measures the battery and what gives you the readout is that phone on the top of the bar pad, and that unit was still in pre-production, uh, and it didn't have the full readout or display that the actual production units will have. So it was kind of hard to decipher between the coding what the actual battery life was. We only did about four to six laps per moto. I think my longest moto might have been 15 minutes. And then as soon as the bike was done, as soon as we were done riding it, they put it right back on the stand and plugged it in so it would always be fully charged the next time we went out and rode. So a lot of people are asking, you know, how's this going to handle for desert riding or mountain riding? For right now, it's really hard to tell. They do claim that it's a 35-minute uh, moto at full speed. Sebastian Tortelli is the main test rider for the brand, and he has done a lot of testing on that, and that's the number that they claim. So for our riding, it was kind of hard to really test the battery life. The bikes that we were on, like I said, were pre-production units, and while they claimed that it would be an 80 horsepower bike, uh, the bikes that we were on only had 60 horsepower, and I say only 60 because 
Uh, all the new modern 450s range from about 52 to 58 horsepower. So 60 horsepower is really right on par with any of the new modern 450s. 80 horsepower was honestly a lot, and to me, I thought 60 was going to be plenty. I actually ended up detuning the bike to 90% horsepower uh, later in the day. They said, the engineer said this was kind of their sweet spot that they enjoyed the bike at. So that's what I rode with, and I had no issues with the bike declining in power or reducing in power that I could notice. A couple other things to touch on, the bike will come in three different colors. There's a red, which you'll see in the video, there's a white, and there's also like a Nardo gray, kind of greenish Nardo gray. Uh, so three color options that are gonna be available. They're also gonna uh, be able to have the bike come with your uh, designed suspension settings, or suspension springs, I should say. The bikes that we were on, I did notice were a bit on the soft side. Uh, I would have liked to have a heavier, stiffer spring in there, but they kind of took the average of all of our riding weights and then put that together uh, to have a, a standard spring uh, for all the bikes that, on the day that we rode. So yeah, it's a cool option. It does have the KYB suspension, which is a really solid platform, and I do think that that'll be a great uh, offering moving forward. Okay, so that kind of wraps things up. Just wanted to touch on a few things after we return home. After watching the video, I kind of noticed a couple things that I didn't really touch on while I was at the track. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments about the bike or anything of how it worked, please drop a comment and we will get back to you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.